hi all uh, in this video i am doing a steam turbine exercise this exercise comes from a previous uh, national exam question paper april 2015 it was question six i will read the statement analyze the data and uh, discuss how i would go about drawing the the, the velocity diagram the statement reads as follows a velocity compounded impulse turbine has two rows of moving blades with a row of fixed blades between them so that is the standard introduction uh, in informing us that we have a multi-stage uh, impulse turbine the nozzle delivers steam at 660 meters per second and an angle of 17 degrees with the plane of rotation of the wheel so 660 is the velocity leaving the nozzle or the velocity of the steam entering the turbine so i use a uh, notation v1 for that then angle 17 degrees is the angle of that steam or, or sometimes called the angle of the nozzle. The first row of moving blades has an outlet angle of 18 degrees. So outlet angle of the first row is phi 1. The second row has an outlet angle of 36 degrees. Outlet angle of the second row, that is phi 2. The row of fixed blades has an outlet angle of 22 degrees. So fixed blades are sometimes called the stationary blades. They are in between the moving blades. So their outlet angle gives us the angle of the steam entering the second stage. That is alpha 2. The mean radius of the, the blade wheel is 155 millimeters and it rotates at 4000 R per minute. So that gives us the radius of the drum and also and the rotational frequency. These two, you use them to calculate you the mean blade speed. And then sometimes then we, we are given the diameter instead of the radius. Just don't confuse the two. The steam flow rate is 80 kilograms per minute. This is mass flow, M dot, and then normally it's, it's given in kilograms per second. So now you must divide it by 60, so that is per second when you calculate power and axial thrust. The velocity is reduced by 10% over all the blades. So 10% reduction in velocity gives us the K value of 90%. Since we normally use it as a fraction, then it's 0 0,90. Right. So let's check then which information we are given and then how can we use this information to be able to draw a velocity determine where to start drawing the velocity diagram so i'll start at the inlet of the first stage we are given information to calculate you so we'll take you as an as given we are given the angle of the nozzle alpha one we are given the velocity leaving the nozzles which is v1 at the inlet of outlet of the second stage we have u and then we have flux one at the inlet of the second stage we have u we have outlet angle of the uh, fixed blades and then at the outlet of the second stage we have u and then we have flux two which is then the outlet blade angle so now we can see which data points are we, give, we are given remember that here we in order to determine where to start we need to have three data points on the triangle where we are starting so based on this information we can start at the outlet of the second stage because there we have two values or two data points we can start at the inlet of the second stage we have two data points we can start at the outlet of the first stage. We have two data points. We can only start 
at the inlet of the first stage that is where we are in three data points u alpha one and v one and this uh, normally uh, students find it easy to start drawing a, a velocity diagram when they are given u alpha and, 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 and v one okay so now you start here at the inlet of the first stage and then you start with u measure the size of u may use a protractor to measure angle alpha and then use a ruler to draw the exact size of v1 and then you join in order to find vr1 and then you will use a protractor to measure theta1 and then ruler to measure vf1 and also vw1 once you are done with that then now you move to the second to the outlet in the outlet we have only two data points we need the third one so then the third one will come from vr1 now that we have vr1 we use the value of vr1 to calculate vr2 remember that the equation is vr1 is equals to k vr2 vr2 is equals to k vr1 so then you get your vr2 now you have vr2 you have a uh, phi1 and then you have u you are able to complete the outlet of the of the first stage then you will find vw2 you'll find v2 you'll find vf2 you'll find beta1 then to move to the inlet of the second stage we have so far two data points alpha2 and u you need the third one so then the third one will come from the uh, using v2 so we use v2 to calculate v3 so then v3 is equals to kv2 then that's how you find uh, the dead data point then you draw it's sort of the same method you are using uh, that you used in the first stage then you will find vr3 vf3 and theta2 once you have this then you will calculate vr4 vr4 is equals to k vr3 so then you'll be able to uh, find vr4 which is then the third, third data point on the outlet of the second stage and then that is how you will complete your diagram so it's important that we analyze the data we check whether the data our data fits properly and we don't confuse the the values uh, we have to read the, the data uh, carefully uh, where it says first stage or second stage inlet versus outlet a plate angle versus angle of the steam so that we don't confuse those so once this plan is solid like this then you can go ahead and start drawing but do not start drawing until you get this plan right you know where your data point is fitting and you know how to draw you go about drawing your velocity diagram thank you i hope that helps Thank you.